Well, a very uh, warm welcome this morning to the Estuary Church Group. And if this is your first time with us, um, particularly warm welcome. You'll notice I'm still wearing a Christmas jumper and uh, it's still looking Christmassy. So we, we uh, are continuing with the Christmas theme for one further service. Today, um, we're calling it the 12 Days Service as we're officially part of the 12 days of Christmas, the period after uh, Christmas Day going through to the 6th of January. And uh, today we've got material that's provided uh, for us mostly uh, by Elim. Elim is the church stream that we're, we're part of, Elim Pentecostal Church. Uh, and we're part of a great big uh, movement and we're going to be benefiting from uh, some of the uh, the larger churches as well who provided some great carols and great versions of traditional carols that uh, we will enjoy. So if this is your first time with us, just to explain what's going to happen, we're, we're live now. Uh, so most of us will be participating live through Zoom, uh, but also over uh, today and over the subsequent days and weeks, uh, we, we, we are straight streaming now live stream to Facebook, but a lot of people join us, um, hundreds actually join us uh, over the weeks uh, to come on Facebook. So if you're watching through Facebook, either live or subsequently, uh, especially warm welcome to you. Uh, normally we have breakout groups. We won't be doing that uh, during the live portion of the, the service uh, and the service will, will flow fairly uh, naturally, hopefully with some carols, some readings. Uh, we're going to hear in a moment from our general superintendent. If you have no idea what a general superintendent is, it's a bit like the Archbishop of Canterbury or perhaps the Pope. Um, it's the, the big boss uh, of Elim. His name is Chris Cartwright and he's going to be just uh, welcoming uh, us uh, officially if you like and uh, following that we will have um, uh, Carol um, by Elim Sound uh, based around joy to the world. So the beginning of of today it's 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 the last uh, service that we will have in 2020 and it's uh, what a year it's it's been it has been a tough year and uh, we look towards 2021 with uh, some anticipation but maybe some trepidation as well but for us we know that there is genuine joy if we if we followers of Jesus there is genuine joy we have hope because our hope isn't based on the circumstances that are around us it's not based on the events that have happened in 2020 that have happened to our family our community the world that we're part of because our foundation is not in the stuff around us but it's in our relationship with God through Jesus and we can know peace. We can know peace in the storm, even in these difficult circumstances. And as we move through to next year as well. So I'm just going to open in prayer. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pray and then we're going to um, play the, the first carol, uh, which is Joy to the World. Uh, 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 and we'll have a welcome from Chris Cartwright and it will flow through uh, from then. Just to say also we're going to have some content, uh, some uh, of our churches in abroad, Philippines and Brazil, they'll be bringing some welcome messages to us as well. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can have confidence, we can have hope and that our hope is based on the firm foundation of your son. And we thank you we can have confidence because we know that your son is risen from the dead. We thank you for that. We thank you that he came, yes, as a baby. We thank you that he grew, that he he lived life uh, as we did. In fact, he lived a tougher life than most of us live, that he died a, a, a terrible death in our place. But Lord, it didn't end there, that he rose again from the dead. And we are men, women, young people who celebrate because we know that our lives are based on your promises and we can have confidence in them because we follow a living Lord. So Lord, this morning, wherever we are in our journey, in our walk with you, whether we are followers of you or whether we're not yet followers, or we're not sure where we stand, we just want to, I just pray for every person who listens to this, who participates uh, in this uh, service, this event, that Lord, every person will be touched by you, that you would move through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to worship together. Uh, by that, I mean the, the carol is going to be played. The video is going to be played. We will all be on mute. 
if you want to sing along, if you're a musician, uh, if you want to play your instruments along, just work out the key. Uh, I can't tell you what key it's in, probably in G. Uh, and that would be great. Or if you just want to reflect and listen to the words, that's, that's fine too. We'll all be on mute. Joy to the world. so excited that we can join together online to celebrate this Christmas, the world-changing wonder of Jesus coming as Saviour and Lord. We have a great mix of carols from across our churches, Elim people bringing Christmas Bible readings, some of our friends from around the world will bring their greetings, a special Christmas message from one of our national leaders and some surprise guests as well. 
Hi everybody, my name is Mark Greenwood and I absolutely love everything about Christmas. I do, all of it. Mm, yeah. To be fair, when I say all of it, there's a few things I'm really not keen on. Sprouts. Sprouts? I mean, when I was younger, my mum used to mash them up and tell me it was cabbage. Can you imagine that? She said it was cabbage, like some kind of posh cabbage. But I ate sprouts. I really, really do. But apart from sprouts, I love absolutely everything about Christmas. I do. When I say everything, it's not quite true. Board games hate playing board games I mean like I sacrifice a lot I really really do for my family because they love board games but I absolutely hate board games I think they're appropriately named board yeah board games hate them but apart from board games and sprouts I love absolutely everything about Christmas I d mm, that's not true either yeah Christmas jumpers I mean what the heck is Christmas jumpers about but apart from sprouts apart from board games and apart from Christmas jumpers I love absolutely everything about Christmas Hello we're Andrew and James Reeve and we're based on the island of Curon here in the Philippines Christmas starts here on the 1st of September when people start decorating their homes and playing Christmas music and then on Christmas Eve the family will have a special time together and they will have uh, spaghetti or pancit noodles and exchange gifts and then on Christmas Day the extended family will all have a bring and share meal and then the children will go and visit their godparents to receive a blessing and a gift from them. Um, godparents play a really important role in the children's lives here in the Philippines. What Christmas means to us is legitimately having chocolate for breakfast, but more seriously, um, it's about celebrating with family the, um, the amazing gift that God gave us of Jesus. Um, this year we'll be celebrating over Zoom, so, um, but we'd like to wish you a really happy Christmas. Yeah. Maligayan Pasco. Paz, eu sou o pastor Silvio Michelete, pastor presidente das igrejas ali no Brasil e é um prazer estar falando com vocês. Nós aqui do Brasil é, temos uma cultura muito gostosa na questão de estarmos celebrando juntos o Natal. As famílias elas se reúnem é, para estar é, festejando essa data tão importante e Natal para nós é Jesus. É, então todas as famílias, mesmo aquelas que não frequentam uma igreja especificamente, também celebram o nascimento de Jesus. Então eu quero deixar aqui um Feliz Natal para vocês, desejar a vocês que é, sejam abençoados nessa data, é, todas as nossas igrejas Elim no Brasil e no mundo. Deus abençoe a todos vocês que são membros e colaboradores deste ministério abençoado. Feliz Natal a todos. And we're just going to continue um, with the video now. And uh, after the, uh, the, the welcome from the missionaries, which caught me slightly butt on the hop, uh, we're going to continue with seeing a nativity um scene so uh, nativity from the the, uh, the early learning center they put together a, uh, a little uh, animated nativity for the kids after that we're going to hear a little bit more from uh, mark greenwood uh, who's the guy who's saying how much he hated christmas jumpers uh, obviously not a guy of any taste whatsoever um but he does have some other good things to say apparently uh then we're going to have uh silent nights uh which is a really great version by um belfast elim church and and then the program will continue after that so i'm going to continue and ask the tech team to continue playing the video and we'll uh for this is one for the kids and the nativity from the early learning center the very first Christmas was long, long ago. A girl called Mary had started to grow. Inside she carried a wee baby boy, and an angel was sent to tell of the joy. Yee! Angel and rocket! Angel and rocket! That's not in a story. Angels don't need rockets. Mary was speechless. She didn't know how. These things could have happened, but still she bowed. 
The angel then made an appearance to Joe, who was worried when Mary had started to show. But Gabriel said, You may find this odd, just trust me, these things are all coming from God. Mary is carrying God's only son, the saviour of old, the long promised one. So call his name Jesus, your maker in skin. He's come now to save all his people from sin. Meanwhile, great Caesar Augustus in Rome had made a decree, return to your home. For Joseph, this ruling meant Bethlehem town. So they rode on their donkey all the way down. Dad, dad, the dad coming to hand. What are you doing? She said they were riding on a donkey, not a helicopter. Fine, that's better. That's not in the story. Arriving in Bethlehem, Mary was blooming. But try as they might, no hotels had room in. They asked one innkeeper, Sir, are you able? The innkeeper said, Oh, go on, use my stable. So Jesus was born in a cold cattle shed. With nowhere to lay him, a trough was his bed. Wait, what? That could be in the story. Actually, it is. Yes, Now out in the fields, some angels appeared to shepherds who cowered and all of them feared. One angel said, Peace, I bring you good news. The Saviour is born, so put on your shoes. The shepherds all hurried to old Bethlehem to worship the baby who'd been born for them. Away in the east, there lived some wise men who followed a star wherever it went. They knew it would lead them to worship the king, so gold, incense and myrrh they did bring. It's getting crowded now. Do you think there's room? Now here around the baby, the world is invited. The strongest and weakest, they all are united. From wise men to shepherds, from angels to sheep. From shiniest heights to the darkest deep. So come to the manger, see God become small. The true Christmas story has room for us all. It's bigger than you thought. Maybe it is in the story. I'm stood outside the Christmas shop in Stratford-upon-Avon. Yeah, that's right. Here, it's Christmas all year round. I mean, imagine that. See me, mate? Anyway, imagine that Christmas all year round. The problem of Christmas, of course, apart from the board games and the sprouts and the Christmas jumpers, is I just eat too much. I eat way too much food. Did you know the average family will spend £1,000, that's right, £1,000 on food at Christmas. I mean, that's just crazy. The average Christmas meal, that whole kind of pudding and dessert and starter and drinks and nuts and all that stuff, the average is £7,000 calories and the average person will put on seven pounds in weight at Christmas. Good to know you're above average, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. But you know what? The beauty and the truth and the thing we need to remember at Christmas is it's not about putting on weight, it's about losing what weighs you down. I'm sure this year you felt a bit weighed down. The message of Christmas has something for you because Jesus came into this world to lift all our cares, lift all our concerns and to bring peace into our lives. In fact, there's this great little sentence in the Bible that says cast. That literally means throw all your cares on him because do you know what? He cares for you. Infant 
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 and 7 to 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh.
Hello, my name is uh, Pastor Aaron Chan. I'm from London, the Chinese uh, Elim Chinese Church. Uh, Christmas to us is really important, especially Christian, because the, the, uh, we used to come from a, a pagan background. We, we we never used to celebrate Christmas, but after we became Christian, Christmas is, means so much to us. Every year we uh, we have party in the church and we have games and we have wonderful time together. Unfortunately, this year, we, because of lockdown, we're not allowed to uh, mix because of social distancing. So what we're going to do this Christmas, we're going to have a live concert so everybody can join in to watch uh, the, 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 the concert together. And also in, the, in, the, in one of the church meetings, we're going to uh, have games despite there's a there's a social distancing, but we will try to find a way how to play games without coming close together. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be wonderful. So we cannot allow the pandemic to, to, to stop us from celebrating Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Sing Dan Kwai Lok. Sing Dan Fai Lok. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the things I really do love about Christmas and I think I'm going to appreciate it even more this year as we've had this crazy global pandemic is just stopping and being with those that I love. And do you know what? I'm proper going to go for it. I'm going to have some right good food at Christmas time. I really, really am. I'm going to drink some schlur. It's going to be fantastic. But I do love that about Christmas. I love remembering to spend time with those that I really, really appreciate. But I also love remembering what Christmas is really, really all about and that for me is what's really exciting uh, behind me is the birthplace of William Shakespeare I'm in Stratford-upon-Avon that is famous for the birth of this amazing person that people from all over the world have heard about and they come to Stratford and they take photographs and they enjoy finding the actual place where William Shakespeare was it's an amazing atmosphere around here when you start to see all the Stratford stuff and the William Shakespeare stuff. But you know what? Christmas I really love is remembering that Jesus Christ really was born. He did turn up. I'm remembering the most famous birthplace that we sing in the carols and we remember that Jesus came to our world and people from all over the world and especially at this time of year begin to think a little bit more about the birth of Jesus, the most famous person who did some of the most famous writings that had incredible impact on our world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Throughout this carol service, we've sung some carols and uh, heard some readings read, which all talk about the truth and the reality of what Christmas is really, really all about. Our friend Kojo read to us from probably one of the slightly lesser known Christmas readings, but he introduced us to the fact that to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government 
will be upon his shoulders. That's talking about how when Jesus was born, the whole of authority rests upon him. And then it goes on to say, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a thought. Do you ever need somebody to listen to who understands what make counsellors really effective is when they've been through stuff so when you share your stuff with them they understand Jesus is the wonderful counsellor he's he's been through stuff he hasn't remained distant or disconnected from earth that's what Christmas was all about it was about God saying I don't want to stay distant I want to turn up let Jesus be close to you this Christmas because he's the wonderful counsellor. He's the mighty God. That means he's powerful and he's able to do so much. I don't know what you're facing in your life right now. I don't know what challenges or pressures or sadnesses you have this Christmas time. But when Jesus came to earth, he came as a mighty God. That's right. This little baby was mighty God rocking up into our world. There's not nothing too big that he can't handle but here's the beauty there's nothing too small that he's not interested in whatever you're facing in your life right now you can call out to God and say God I need you and of course the the reason Jesus came was not just to deal with those kind of physical challenges but actually there's a spiritual issue as well you see every one of us have done our own thing and left God out. But here's the beauty, there's nothing that you have done that Jesus can't or won't forgive, whether it's big or small. He wants to forgive you and he's well able to do that. To show just how mighty he was, that baby Jesus grew up and he was stuck on a cross. And as he was dying on a cross, he took the punishment for the wrong of the whole world and he came back alive, you see, for Christians, you can't really understand the truth of Christmas unless you understand the truth of Easter, that Jesus Christ came to take the punishment for the wrong of the whole world. He's a truly mighty God. But then also he's a prince of peace. Do you need peace in your life right now? I guess around our world, we could all do with a little bit of peace coronavirus has wreaked havoc across our world and it's probably impacted your life and here's the beauty that whatever is going on outside it's possible to feel peaceful inside but it's only possible when you allow Jesus to be a part of your life to allow him the prince of peace to bring peace to your life he's the prince of peace but then it tells us that he's also the everlasting father. I guess at Christmas time, we often think about fathers that are not with us. We live in a fatherless world in, in so many, many ways. But I want to say to you that Jesus is the perfect father who knows how to treat you and will treat you right. He wants to become your father this Christmas. You know, when you're given presents, I don't, I don't know if you maybe fear the worst, like secret Santa presents. Gosh, what are, what are we going to get? And I don't know whether presents and gifts are going to be quite the same this year. But when you're given a gift, you can, you can do a number of things. You can, you can take it and say, oh, thank you, and open it immediately and say, oh, this is fantastic. And sometimes you're a bit disappointed with what you've got. Sometimes you're really pleased. I suppose you could say, oh, I'll open it later, maybe put it in the garage and open it at some point in time. Uh, and I guess if you're really, really sad, uh, you can say, Do you know, I don't I don't want that gift this year, as in every year. The truth of Christmas from that first Christmas to right now is that God has given us a gift and he's called Jesus for to us. A child is born to us us a son is given another little sentence in the bible says that for god so loved the world he gave his one and only son so whoever believes in him will not die but will have everlasting life god is offering you a gift today will you accept it reject it or maybe just put it to one side 
just as I draw to a close in my uh, talk to you today, there are three ways that you can respond to God's offer of a gift. You can say a big yes and open up your heart to him this Christmas. To do that, you simply need to say, God, I, I know I've left and lived my life without you and left you out, but today I want you in my life. And saying yes to God is about inviting him in and with his help, turning away from living life without him and starting to live life his way, asking him to forgive you for all the things that you've done wrong. You know, as I look at my life, there's things that I've done that I'm not happy about. And so it comes as no surprise to me that there are things that I've done that God's not happy about. And it would probably come as no surprise to you too. But the truth is, God may not be happy about those things, but he doesn't judge us or condemn us. He wants to forgive us. Why don't you, right now, where you are today, say a big yes to God. Say, God, I'm inviting you in. And my prayer for you is that as you do that, you'll realise that God has already said a big, massive yes to you. Uh, but another response you can have is you might feel that you're not really ready to say that big yes to God. May I encourage you to become what I call a little yes, which is, yeah, you're not ready to become a Christian to start to follow Jesus. But this Christmas time, it would be an amazing decision if you decided to make an intentional decision to find out more. You see, if there's any possibility of the truth that Christmas is real, you want to look into it, afford yourself the luxury of looking into it. It's too good to miss out on. Why don't you become a little yes? And you could say that even now in your own heart and mind. Say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to become a little yes. I'm going to really look into this Christianity stuff and find out whether this story, this narrative about Jesus really is all true. Or there's a third response. And if I might just gently challenge you today, you might be saying, I'm not, I'm not really ready to say that big yes to God or even that little yes. May I encourage you gently or challenge you gently to become what I call a healthy maybe. Many people say they're open minded, but don't often kind of apply that to Christianity. May I encourage you to make a commitment today to at the very least become open minded about the reality of Jesus and God and the Christian faith. And if you are open minded, may I encourage you to remain open minded, to make that commitment. You're not throwing everything in and investigating, but just keep it on your agenda a little bit more than once a year at Christmas. It's what I call a healthy maybe. Why? Because I want to encourage you to take your, maybe there's something in this and don't let it dissipate, but just keep it on your agenda to make it a healthy maybe. I'm almost done. If you're a big yes or a little yes or a healthy maybe, we'd love to help you. And so if you're watching this today, you can message in the chat to the church that's hosting it. Or if you're watching it on the Elim YouTube channel or through some other means, then why don't you get in contact with us at elim.org. UK. Go to our website. There's a church locator on there. Send us a message and just say, I'm a big yes or a little yes or a healthy maybe. Let us know that you listen to one of the Christmas events and we would love to send you some information, maybe connect you with uh, another bunch of Jesus's followers if that's what you would like. But help us to help you this Christmas. God bless. And as uh, we respond to that as well, we're going to listen to a reflection song called Noel. Noel means God with us. And it may be that as you were listening to that, you thought, yeah, um, I'm actually already in that position of having said yes to God. Well, that that's great. Uh, but we can also use the song to reflect upon what it means for God being with us, what it means to have peace genuinely in the circumstances that we face the, the words of the song are, come and see what God has done, born to suffer, born to save, born to raise us from the grave, the story of amazing love. But it may also be that you were listening to that and you thought, well, actually, I, I'm not sure where I've been spiritually for, for a while, um, but I'm, you know, either a healthy maybe, I want to keep open minded, I want to do a little bit more, a little yes, maybe look into this more and we will talk about it at the end of the service opportunities for that. Or maybe a big yes, 
I want to I want to follow. So let's use this song as a, a song of reflection and response. Everyone will be on mute. You can listen to it. You can uh, respond in your own heart um, as God leads. And then after that, there will be a final carol, We Three Kings. So let's listen to uh, Noel. <laughs>
fields and fountains, born mountains, following young the star. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, 12 days service this morning. It's the last of our Christmas season uh, services. And it may be that you've been challenged as you've listened and watched uh, and worshipped. Uh, and it may be that you've made a big yes, in which case we'd love, well, a big le- yes, a little yes, or a healthy maybe. Any of those responses, really, we'd love uh, to hear from you. Uh, within the Estuary Church group, which is um, what you're watching this morning, we're part of three churches in South East Essex, in Ashendon, in Rayleigh and in Southend. And uh, we, we run uh, various courses, Alpha courses, uh, Got Questions courses for those who want to find out more about what it means to follow Jesus or maybe have followed Jesus and are not quite sure uh, now where they stand. Uh, we'd love uh, to connect with you and in the new year we're going to be running some uh, mental health and well-being uh, courses as well uh, much needed in this time that we are living through so i think it just remains for me to to wish you and your family um, the remains of the, this christmas season and this 12 day season a peaceful uh, a restful time and that you may know god's blessing on you and your family throughout, not just today, not just right now in this moment, 
but throughout not just the 12 day period but throughout 2021 the rest of your life that there's that offer of life for those of us that follow Jesus already just to remind ourselves we have that peace and that joy uh, even when the circumstances buffet us uh, buffet us that we can know that foundation of peace because we our hope our security is in him I'm going to close with prayer uh, and then we're going to have a breakout group and I'll explain that in a minute. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of all hope. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus that we may know peace, peace that passes all understanding, peace that's not based on a human understanding of the situations that we're in, but is based on the understanding of the reality is that we are loved by you that you've called us, that you've created us, that we, you have a plan and a purpose for each person on this planet and you want to be in relationship with us. We thank you for that. And uh, I just pray, Lord God, for your blessing, Lord, for everyone who is watching uh, this now, who, who watches this uh, video in the future. Lord, I want to pray for your blessing uh, on them and their families and that they too may know your peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen.